This video shows AR Drone Flight Pro with the new AR Drone 2 flight recorder that Parrot have just released, configuring it to use the flight recorder for autonomous flight and also showing some uh, in just in mapping mode and also just overlay information on the screen. I'll just show you the standard map view. This is using the downloaded map. You can also use satellite view if you've already connected to the internet and selected satellite view, which I have done. Obviously, my app doesn't cache any of this Google satellite view information because Google doesn't allow that. So it's just up to Google whether they continue doing offline cache or not. OK, I'll show you now the planner view, which is the new view to support the flight recorder. This gives you a full screen map. There is actually an option to go f completely full screen if you would want that. But in this mode, it actually shows you the 3D view, which would be when you're in autonomous flight and also shows you the GPS status and various launch home and waypoint following, which is all to do with using the flight recorder. So I'll just add a waypoint in. And this is the new waypoint format supported. Basically, I'm supporting QGround control format in the waypoints.txt file. And this is actually when you click on a waypoint, this is the new edit dialog for a waypoint. So these are the different waypoint types that QGround control supports. and. The only ones I really use in the app are launch, takeoff, land, and stand away point. But you can edit it, and also you can use QGround control. And so if you save off a waypoints.txt file from QGround control, then you can load it in my app now. Right. So I'll just show you can change the attitude, altitude. I mean, the default is to, for the altitude to be selected because that's what I think you're most likely to want to change is the default altitude. To go higher than three meters, you need to have a lats in your drone configured. Standard configuration allow the drone to go higher than three meters. OK, so I'll just add some more waypoints. As you can see, you're getting continuous updates from the GPS on the drone. Now, I could change this to land, but if you just do back, it won't save the changes. You have to remember to press OK to save the changes. Or you can also delete a waypoint by just using the remove option. OK, if you just press and hold on the waypoint, then you can drag around with Google, Google standard, sort of Google supported feature. And you can change that one to land, click OK, and that's saved it off now. That's so the final waypoint will do a land. Just move it and drag, show and drag it around again. One thing I should say is that you have to be in the plan view to use the autonomous waypoint mode. Basically, it's using Mavlink, which is the new autonomous vehicle protocol. But that's only enabled in this plan of view mode. In standard, so you won't be able to fly the drone. You can't control the drone from this mode, although you can hit the emergency or disable button. Disable will just stop it following waypoints. Emergency will stop it following waypoints and land the drone. So you can also set the drone heading. So it, when you take, when you start the waypoint following autonomous mode, it will automatically be recording video to the uh, flight recorder. And obviously, with this Mav Mavlink supports setting drone heading, so you can choose to. S video interesting points of interest on your route. Okay. You can also
also to tell the drone to stay longer as a waypoint. Obviously this is all down to the apparent implementation in the firmware, so you might need to update your drone firmware to the latest version. Certainly only 2.41 and or higher will support the flight recorder itself. You can see that the buttons are greyed out currently. That's because... Oh, I'll just go back to the other mode. Now you can see you still get flight control in this mode, but in this mode you can fly the drone normally, but you can't use Mavlink control. It is, we will actually have removed all the waypoints from the flight recorder at this point. Okay, I'll just show you now going into the UI. There's a couple of new UI information block overlayers available. So if I just scroll down to the bottom, you see there's GPS fix and GPS distance. So I'll put GPS fix on one side and I'll put GPS distance on the other side. And basically this is information from the drone GPS. Parrot have added this extra nav data protocol and here you can see that now I've got GPF fix which is the drone's accuracy of its fix estimated accuracy and the distance is an estimate of the distance from you to the drone you can see it's depends on both the accuracy of your fix and the accuracy of the drone fix so it can be plus or minus the fix radius in both cases As you can see, as it changes, it's the drone isn't actually moving at all in this video. It's just sitting on the ground, and this is my device. So this is just GPS inherent inaccuracies. I'll just show you what happens if you uh, simulate what's moving the drone in flight. Um, so basically, you get updates from the drone to do with attitude and so the 3d model will, will update although you can turn off the 3d model if you go to the mapping option the new option in mapping okay now i'll just show you some of what happens in the when you get a better fix basically you need a fix of better than six meters accuracy before Mavlink will do autonomous flight because otherwise you risk the drone flying off at random directions so what you can what I've done is I've disabled the launch home which actually returns to your current position not where it took off from and the waypoints which will follow the waypoints launch will just take the drone off and into a hover um, and then that will switch to land so you can then press land and it will land disable will just stop it following waypoints and leave it in its current hovering position emergency will tell it to land where it currently is it doesn't cut the rotors like a normal emergency as you can see the drone goes blue when you've got a good fix and the buttons of that launch home and waypoints are enabled just so you know that it's got a good GPS fix and it's uh, capable of following waypoints. Otherwise, if I didn't grey out the buttons, you'd have to wait. So you'd press the button and nothing would happen until eventually you get a GPS fix. Okay, you can see as, as, as the GPS changes and you get some... It starts reducing accuracy again. So it all depends on how good your GPS fix is. And I'll just show you the Q ground control compatible waypoints file. It's saved in the map folder, and you see the waypoints.txt file. So you could copy this in from Q ground control if you wanted to. As you can see, it's Q ground control format, and just a list of waypoints and the where the waypoint is, a waypoint type. I mean, look at Q ground control and the Mavlink protocol for more information on this format. Okay, thanks for watching. More details on my website soon, as it currently it's in beta.